Good morning. This is Pastor Jeff. I'm here in my office in between the two worship services. It is February 26, 2023. It is year A, the first Sunday in Lent. Our gospel reading for the day comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. The Testing of Jesus When Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tested by the devil, he fasted forty days and forty nights, and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you. And on the day, their hands will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again, it is written, Do not put your Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in their glory. And he said to him, All these I will give you, if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him, and suddenly angels came and waited on him, the word of the Lord. So this morning, we hear the story of Jesus being tempted. The temptation comes right after his baptism. It is very important for us to remember that at his baptism, a voice announced that this is my son. The reason that this is vital is that it is all about the identity and our identity will play a role later in the story. Throughout history, individuals have stepped away in chosen times of aloneness. Most of the time, it has to do with one of three things. One would be prayer. Another would be letting go. Then finally, sometimes people choose to be alone when there are choices to be made. Jesus, following the baptism, pursued solitude. The solitude was a time for him to be prepared for his ministry. Before he went out and healed individuals and taught the crowds and liberated those who needed it, he chose loneliness. When it came to temptation, Jesus had options. It came face to face with dark options that would have led him on a journey down a different path. When it came time for his decisions, he leaned into his identity. When the seducer came at him, Jesus was able to respond to him through a deep spring of knowledge, knowing who he was and what his purpose was going to be. He was God's beloved son, so he was going to answer no to each temptation that came his way. I know that we see ourselves vastly different from Jesus, yet we too are God's beloved. When we do the work of aloneness, we are able to confirm, clarify, and sustain that identity. For us as a church community, part of our purpose and mission of the church is to remind each other that we are children of God. This is why we as individuals must be willing to engage in worship and church and community events. These are places and spaces where we can enhance our understanding of this identity and clarify what this identity means for us as Christians and a faith community. I don't want to seem like I am bringing the hammer down or enforcing the law, 
But studying the scripture and attending worship and being at the Lord's table is what helps form our identity. And knowing and being confident in our identity is extremely important. So why is this so important? Let's go back to the wilderness and look at Jesus being tempted. When Jesus is being tempted, it came in the form of questions. And they were centered around scripture. When Jesus responded to the temptus, he did not have to make up his response on the fly. Instead, his speech or answers came from an overflow within his spirit. The overflow came from the instructions that he had received from his family and the time that he had spent in the synagogue. Can we make this a reality in the 21st century? This can, or should I say, this is the church's mission. In our world today, there are so many idols. We tend to put most things before God and before church. When we are disconnected with our faith and our faith community, it is easy to forget whose we are and what we are called to do. We have entered into a season of Lent, and Lent provides us an opportunity to enter into a time of aloneness or self-emptiness. We can take our ego and set it aside. Our journey through Lent has a pinnacle, and that pinnacle is Holy Week. When Jesus speaks of remembrance, we have the opportunity to have that remembrance when we come to the table. When we reflect on Jesus, we can recall everything that he refused. We can then take a look at everything that he embraced. Then finally, we are able to rest in everything that he gave for our sake. With all of that, we can live into a great remembrance of who we are, God's beloved children. I wrestled hard on how I wanted to finish the sermon, and I decided to rest into our identity and our humanity and what I have seen and heard especially the last three years when the pandemic began. The word that seems to keep resurfacing is emptiness. Many individuals are beginning to realize that as humans, we are insufficient. Now, don't take that as a bad thing. As a human being, we carry inside of us a whole. I remember as a teenager, there were ministers at the church camp that talked about trying to fill the hole, and it just won't happen. I pushed that off for years, maybe decades, but not now. I have seen individuals across our country try to fill their hole. If I just get this car, if I can only put my hands around the latest gadgets, if I just lived in that house, or if that person was in my life, all would be well with my soul, and the void will be filled. They receive what they pursued, and they are still empty. About 10 years ago, I came across some work from Blaise Pascal, and their work was way over my head, especially when it came to their mathematics and physics thoughts. But there was one concept that I could begin to wrap my head around. And it was a reference to the void and the emptiness in our life. He believed that the hole was a God-shaped hole. There was only one way that that hole could be filled. And that was through a relationship with the God. Maybe his thought on emptiness was from the work of Augustine 1,200 years earlier when Augustine said, Humans are always restless until we rest in God. 
the bad news, we have a hole and an emptiness in our lives. The good news, the hole can be filled when we realize that we are created for relationships with God and one another. Church community, God's grace is sufficient for us. Jesus was victorious because he leaned into God. Jesus now invites us to find hope and courage in the God who not only called Jesus my beloved, but calls us his beloved children. May we continue to be reminded whose we are. Amen.